Stanford University. This is an example of a um, experiment in a box, a shoe box. And what we have inside is um, a diffraction experiment, which is an optical experiment. All of this then produces a set of states or a set of parameters that are associated with this experiment. There's also a video camera that records the experiment and the results that are visible. All of that information then is recorded onto a database. Metadata is added to it so that we essentially can find all of the states um, that were available during this experiment. We can then recall it for visualization and carry out the experiment as if you were doing them in real time in the lab. The benefit of that is that it makes it incredibly scalable. Um, I can now give you a hard drive that has an experiment on it. It only required a few hours uh, of time to record it. There's no maintenance after you've actually had it on the hard drive. And now I can uh, upload it to Google and um, it's massively accessible. A million students could use it at the same time, not only in the Western world, but I think in the developing world as well. This experiment demonstrates the first nano-optical conveyor belt, which um, uses laser light to drive particles along a metal surface. And this experiment was not designed with iLabs in mind. It has a large laser, and it takes up a lot of space on an optical table, but it can still be automated in the same way as a, an experiment in a shoebox. When you do teach a complicated subject like maths or physics or science or biology, you often would like to have access to a laboratory to essentially explain these physical phenomena. In order to be able to get an online degree, I would think you would have to be exposed to experiments. And so you can't have 100,000 students go through a classical experimental setup, uh, either remotely or in the university. And so I hope that at least this technique um, will allow us to um, provide that kind of resource and ability to these students that take these remote internet classes. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.